I just want to introduce myself. Uh, I, I'm new to the precinct, so you can put a face to the name. Greg Carnicle. I've uh, been at the precinct now since November. Uh, Commander Ruggiero, Lisa, retired. Um, she, Pam drove her, drove her ragged. She said, I'm done. <laughs> so uh, she actually retired effective January, so she's now retired. So that's one of those natural attrition things that occur. A little bit about myself. Uh, I did go to high school at Cortez, not Washington, but uh, oh. that's where Nick went. So, <laughs> um, But uh, pretty much grew up in the Valley uh, since sixth grade on. My dad was in the military, so I traveled around a lot before that, but uh, been here for a long time. Parents have been uh, in their house since 69, but uh, I've been on the department 26 years. Been all around the department, worked up through the ranks, had the SWAT team, worked detectives, worked all the different different assignments. So I've got a pretty good feel for the department and uh, ways we can uh, address some of the issues that we've identified here in, in your neighborhood, in the Washington neighborhood. So, you know, things that we're doing, like I said, I've been here for three months. We uh, also received a new uh, resource lieutenant. That's Charlie Consolian. He, uh, he came up from the downtown area. He's a new resource lieutenant, so we're really working together to address the hot spots, which uh, we've identified, 19th Avenue. I know that's not, nothing new to you guys, but uh, 19th Avenue has been a hot spot since I was an officer working at Christown off-duty. So we are, we are addressing it. We're, uh, we're attacking it. Uh, we actually, we just started a new program. Um, we've done concentrated enforcement for the last three weeks. We've really seen a difference. Um, it just seemed like... Put it bluntly, the natives were running ragged out there doing whatever they wanted, people drinking and open, just walking across the streets, doing what they want to do, panhandling and the homelessness. So we've really been attra attacking those issues. Um, so looking at the crime rate, Mario pulled up the crime rate over the last four years. I would say it's probably steady from what occurred last year. We don't have the last three months of the, uh, of the year, but looking at it, it looks like we're about the same as last year. Our goal is to get that below last year we really want to drive crime down so that's what we're concentrating on you know the other big new news is the extension of light rail so we're trying to get ahead of that and uh, work work through the extension of light rail as well so things are going in the right direction we're excited to be here i'm excited to be here um, got a great cao team with mario and the other crew and uh i'm happy to be here but i wanted to open up to you guys if you guys have any questions things i can answer for you I've got another meeting I've ahead too. Um, I was at Cactus Park neighborhood meeting the other night, and the policemen were we're talking about that everybody's going back on patrol. Not everybody's going back on patrol. <laughs> I well, mean, almost everybody. This well, is what they get big, big I got. What what has occurred is basically over the last five six years we haven't been able to hire. So what's that created is a vacuum because a lot of officers are retiring, you know, through natural attrition mm -hmm. and. Some of our specialty details, you know, they're shrinking, but patrol is shrinking as well. For us to be able to have enough officers to respond to your calls for service, we need to pull additional resources. And what Chief Yonner has identified is some of those specialty details, we need them to come help out. So right now there's a program to where all the detectives are going to spend, it's just one day a week in patrol um, to help out. Um, to address those issues. So the good news is we started hiring again. Um, we now have 10 new officers in training in our precinct now. So it's, it's good news. There is help coming. Uh, it's, it should keep up with attrition, we're hoping. But see the new blood coming in, the new officers. I mean, seeing these young officers is, is great for me. I mean, I don't like to see the years they were born because it's scary. <laughs> but it, it, it is. It is the 90s. I mean, they're as old as my kids. And I'm like, oh, wow. So, but, uh, but that, that is a good news. But no, not everyone's going to back to like our CAOs and our net teams. We're going to utilize them to kind of help out uh, like rotating weeks because they do a phenomenal job and we don't want to really pull them in too many directions, but everybody's got to help out right now. Okay, thank you. Yep. How, how many people go into training and how many get out of your school? I heard some crazy numbers. I was like, wow, they really well, need a lot of Well, typically in, in, a, in an academy, usually you'll have up around 50 in a class. And then usually you'll graduate probably around 40, 45. So there's 10 to 12. 
And then through the officer training process, you may lose another one to two percent. So it really depends because we want to make sure that we have the quality officers out there that can do the job. Mm -hmm. Can I just ask details of how you're addressing 19th Avenue? 19th Avenue, like I said, we started with the concentrated patrols. We had all our CAOs, we had all our net officers in uniform, basically addressing all crime on that corridor. Actually, it was from 15th Avenue all the way to the freeway is what we were working. And we're doing this in, in conjunction with Mountain View Precinct just south of us because the, the issues are just south of there as well, Osborne North. So we're working with them as well. So there's concentrated, we're addressing. Some more patrols more patrols and then we'll go, we've got some UC components involved in this as well that we really can't talk about exactly what they're doing but we've got UC components coming in there as well so we're making sure that businesses are adhering to what they're supposed to be doing because we've got some liquor stores that oversell and stuff like that so we're addressing some of those issues and then like I said we're also working with NSD we're working with human services as well to try to assist the homelessness to give them options we've just begun the MROPE program MROPE is the misdemeanor repeat offender program it's been in the city for a while but Desert Horizon really hasn't had an MROPE program to, to speak of so we're really putting together the MROPE program to where we're going to be addressing those misdemeanors you know you okay you're jaywalking you're drinking in public it's no big deal they're in and out of jail with the MROPE it gives them mandatory sentences where they're going to be staying in jail for for 180 days it's more of a sentence to them so we work with the county attorney's office the city prosecutor as well to make sure that they get more of a sentence so we're starting that program as well so and we're working with the transit folks as well who work the light rail because you know there's rules that i didn't even know that we're learning about you know you have to have a ticket if you're between the, the two meters and stuff like that so there's things in educational for the officers as well as we're educating the public on so right now it's just concentrated concentrating on on getting the enforcement there working with nsd to get these services to those that truly need it those that don't we're just going to put them in jail okay i would First of all, you, you guys need to be commended. You've worked very hard. I, I know on my corner, you've done, you know, everybody involved's done a great job. They, we spend, you know, I, I tell my customers we're making 10 to 15 calls a day to the 262-6151 number. Your guys' response times have gotten better. Uh, it, we have lulls and highs and lows as to what goes on in that area. One of the things that and I think a lot of the people in the community would like to see that, that I've seen personally myself and I'm willing to help the police department with is, is the bicycle patrols. They're, they're great. Um, they, they get in areas that, that the patrol cars can't. They do things that the patrol cars can't. And, and I'm perfectly willing to offer up my services with helping them with tires, flats, any of those kind of problems. Um, and, and I've offered it to them before when they've been at the shop. So right, and you're what you're working. I'm Greg with Greg Clark on Okay. Right here at 19th and just south of Bethany. Right. Just south. So the bike squad, we have the one bike squad. We'd like to put more officers on, on the squad, but unfortunately, logistically, it just isn't going to work. I mean, it works downtown very well because it's all concentrated response types. Mm -hmm. Up here, we utilize, I mean, those guys are all over the precinct. You're right. I mean, they're all up at Hatcher. They come all the way down to Bethany. They're all over the place. They do a phenomenal job. But unfortunately, we're starting to stretch them in too many directions. Well, th this time of year is one thing, but to watch those guys come in full dress, you know, 120 degrees riding those bicycles or nothing, and, and you know, you got to give them a, a hand. They're, they do a great job. We do, and we applaud everything they do. Do and like I said, we and that's why we try not to mess with what they're doing um, too much because they are doing a phenomenal job. I mean, it's businesses like yours and that, that we need the help with for the ATAs and everything else that's going on, and we need the calls. I mean, response times, yes, there's going to be some times where response times take a while, but we, we'll get there, but we need to know that so that we, we have the call value and we can identify what resources need to be in those areas. Remember what Joe said, if you don't call, it didn't happen. And that's the way that upper people in the police you, uh, department look at it. So if well, they're not getting calls. They think, oh, there's nothing going on over there. And, and that's, that's how we determine how we're going to disperse manpower throughout the city. I mean, right now, Desert Horizon is probably the, is the third busiest precinct. You've got Maryville, Australia, which is huge. You've got Mountain View, which is huge. You know, but, and, and we're right behind those, those two precincts. 
and it's just geographically we've we've expanded i mean we used to we used to not come down this far south and you know that used to be part of what? no it was part oh. of uh, mountain view i was going to say squaw peak but <laughs> it used to be part of uh, mountain view precinct and now we've absorbed that as well but the sunny slope area in this area here we've always had and we've always concentrated heavily on it and now we go further <laughs> south and that was one of their more challenging areas so now it's more challenge that we've absorbed and we're working the, on that as well so and then we've got our one area that's way up north where our precinct is so we're kind of geographically stretched so we're hoping to get everything confined and, and compact and then but yeah like like she said if we don't get the calls it doesn't show that we need the resources we need the manpower you know people are like i'm not going to call on that that bike theft i'm not going to call on somebody stealing something from my garage because there's nothing they can do probably realistically it's very difficult to do something but that call generated helps us with crime statistics helps help helps us to identify crime patterns and trends so we can focus on those areas you know we may not get the stuff back but we need to know it happened so that we can address it so it's like crime stop that's what you're saying called crime stop. absolutely box. okay that's what, okay this may have gotten better because i haven't nearly hit somebody for a little while but <laughs> on 19th avenue uh, uh they come out of the um light rail uh -huh. and just flood the street and oh, the yeah. transit people have been standing there at times and i've always wondered why they didn't say that's not a cross or don't do that or whatever and when they had all the a lot more construction than now I mean, 19th Avenue felt dangerous. Right and and that, that's always been an issue, and we're already identifying that on the, the new extension that they've they put in because people aren't used to that, and how do they get across the street? They're not used to going down to the crosswalks. They're not, they don't want to go down to the crosswalks. Yeah, they don't, they don't. And, you know, and that's what we're working with transit. Transit basically hires a lot of security guards. But the security guards aren't going to really get engaged those folks. They may say something to them, but they, their, their whole goal is to, to kind of stand there as security and then check – maybe 10% of the people for tickets, and that's it. And then they rely on us, and they want us to do the enforcement, and what we're telling them is you're not properly posted. You want us to take enforcement, we'll take the enforcement, but a civil citation is really not going to do much for us. We need to do something more, more criminal so that it has more teeth. And, that's, and actually that came up in a meeting last week with them, and we're, we're working with Transit on that, Valley Metro. So. Okay, the lady that's in charge of that, was she bringing some more stuff. She talked to us. Adrian used to be yeah. one of us. Yeah, she's, she's kind of getting, help, getting stuff better. She's getting things better, but we keep telling her, hey, you forgot about the police side because okay. you know, <laughs> she, 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 she's, she's making requests of us that she knows are very difficult and we can't do. Uh -huh. But no, she is making things better because she does know that crossover. So yes, Adrian there has helped with the, uh, with the <laughs> transition between yeah. police and uh, Valley Metro. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, Commander. Thank you. I'm happy to be here.